Go ahead. So Ezekiel chapter 33. God is good, amen? amen. Come on, God is good, amen? amen? I just want to read this. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 1. I just need to tell you that the Lord is heavy this morning. The presence of God is thick. God has got a message for you. You're not here by accident. You're not here at a routine or ritual. Even if you are, God says, wow, that's cool. I'll use that. Um, God is releasing to you An appointment, an appointment with him. He's releasing to you, Russell Bundy, a, an, a, an anointing and a power to change a district, to change an entity. He's releasing to you, Michael Smith, an anointing and a power to change a territory, a physical zip code, a demographic. He's releasing to you the ability to speak into people's lives, Nancy Richard. He's He's, anoint, he's, he's releasing you. In scripture, the sound of the trumpet, the sound of the, the trumpet, they didn't have radios, they didn't have TVs, they didn't have cell phones, they didn't have technology to communicate, so they would communicate through the shofar horn, through the trumpet of the Lord, say trumpet. Jesus, and hear me on this, Jesus is the trumpet of the Lord. Jesus is the sound that broke from eternity into this physical realm that we live in that's bound by time. Jesus is the voice of God. Jesus is the light of the kingdom. So the Bible says that in Jewish culture, they would sound an alarm. They would sound this horn. And with three short blasts of the horn, that would tell the people the enemy was approaching. Get back out of the fields and back into the protection of the wall. Get, come out of your playground, get off of the picnic, quit fishing, quit working, and get back to protection because when you heard the three blasts of the horn or the trumpet, it was an indication that the enemy was spotted by one of the watchmen on the wall, so therefore you need to pay attention and get back to a place of protection, amen? Listen to what Ezekiel 33 says. It says, again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people and say to them, when I bring the sword upon a land and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman, say watchman. watchman. When the watchman or when he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet, say trumpet, and warns the people. Listen, God's positioned watchman in your life. He's positioned watchmen in the church. He's positioned watchmen around our cities. He's positioned spiritual people with the ability to have discernment to see farther than most, to see more clearly than most. He's positioned people as watchmen to protect the entire body. Amen? Amen. So it says when one of those watchmen are on the wall and he sees the enemy or he sees danger... Verse 3, let him blow, or if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever, verse 4, hears the sound of the trumpet and does not heed warning. Have you ever heard somebody warn you of something and you ignored it? You ever heard the lifeguard blow their whistle and you're like, yeah, whatever, right? And then all of a sudden there's the shark, you know, swimming up on the beach or something. You ever, you ever heard your parent, did your parent ever sound an alarm and say, hey, don't, and you did anyways, and you paid the price. You understand what I'm saying? You ever heard somebody say, hey, my daughter's famous for sending texts. 
while I'm driving. She's famous for sending texts while I'm driving. Hey, there's a cop, through, you know, 30 yards in front of you because I just went through there. Slow down. You ever, you ever not heeded the warning? You understand what I'm saying? Listen to what it says. Whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his bloodshed shall be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself, but he who takes warning will save his life. Amen? Amen. Six. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes away any person from among them, he is taken away in his own sin or his own iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not sound the trumpet, does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes the people away from them, he will be taken in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. It's a failure or it is an, a crime when the watchman who's been given a position to sound the alarm when the enemy strikes or the enemy is seen and he doesn't sound the alarm. That would be the equivalent if we were all in a military situation in a war and somebody had the night watch and you're, that person was there to keep watch from midnight to three or midnight to four while we could all get some rest and that watchman didn't sound the alarm and we were all slaughtered in our sleep. Amen? Let me finish the verse, or the passage, verse seven. So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore you shall hear a word from my mouth and warn them for me. So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore you shall hear a word from my mouth and warn them for me. So you, Cameron, I have made you a watchman for the house of Whitestone Church. Therefore, you shall hear a word from the Lord and warn them for me. So you, husband, I have made you a watchman for your house. Therefore, you shall hear a word for your house from the mouth of God and warn them for God. For you, teacher, principal, lawyer, doctor, person on the street. For you, I have made you a watchman for the street. Put your street there. Which street do you live on? For you, father, for you, mother, I have made you a watchman over your babies. But oh, therefore you shall hear a word from the mouth of the Lord and warn them. How many times have I been in the position of watchman but I let my family continue to watch the movie. How many times have I been in the position of watchman, but I didn't sound the alarm because culture says it's no big deal. Everybody's doing it. How many times have I been put in the position of watchman, but like Adam, I let the enemy tempt my wife and deceive her to eat the fruit but I was right there with her and didn't put my hand up to stop because I didn't want to ruin their good time. How many times as a watchman did I not put the, the restraint on my kids because they're just going through a rebellious time? Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, what danger we would be in if we're called to be watchmen on the wall but we don't sound the alarm because it's not politically correct. We can't talk about that. We don't wanna run people off. We don't wanna disrupt their party, but the enemy's coming and he'll disrupt their party. The enemy's coming and he'll disrupt their life. The enemy's coming and he'll disrupt their good time. Amen? It says, so you, Put your name in scripture. So I'm going to read this and I'd like for you just to say your own name out loud. So you, I have made you a watchman and now say the name of your last name. I have made you a watchman for the house of, come on, I have made you a watchman for the house of. 
Therefore, you shall hear a word from the mouth of God. See, God never puts you in a position of authority and doesn't speak to you. He never puts you over a group of people to watch and then doesn't give you any instruction when the enemy's approaching. He doesn't give you a classroom teacher and not give you insight on how that mindset of stupidity is trying to rob Johnny because he just can't put two and two together like everybody else. So therefore, the enemy's telling him he's stupid, dumb, and ignorant. And so he's fixing to adopt the enemy's mindset of stupid, dumb, and ignorant. And so teacher, she, the Lord's going to give you a word on how to speak to Johnny so that he doesn't feel that just because he's having a hard time putting two and two together. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's very practical. It's not just this supernatural thing. It's very practical. God's giving you a word because you're there to guard over your neighbor who's about to leave his wife for Susie Q down the street that's 20 years younger, and the Lord's going to put it on your heart to just go next door and say, hey, think about this again because what you're giving up is not worth. See, God's put you in this position as watchmen. Maybe not over a church. Don't just think, oh, that's just for the priest. No, no, he's put you as a watchman over that cubicle and those three employees that work next to you. He's put you as a watchman over those police authority. He's put you as a watchman over those people. And then he will speak to you so that you can warn them for God. If we have this mindset, oh, God saved them, oh, God changed them, God says, what did I put you here for? Why did I leave you here? I didn't save you just so you could have a blessed life. I saved you so that I could speak to you and you could go tell others. <laughs> See, some of you say, hey, pastor, I'm not the, the husband of, of the house. I'm not the parent. Listen, God speaks through children to speak to their parents, to warn their parents. God speaks to brothers to warn brothers, sisters to, brother, to warn sisters. He speaks to you. And he doesn't speak to you heavy-handed like you need to go up to that person and hit them over the head with this Bible. He gives you wisdom on how to warn them because we all know you got to warn people different ways. Some people do need to be punched right between the eyes. Some people do. But some people need to be warned very differently. When I would act up, my dad had a famous line, and he used it thousands of times. Cameron, the principal called. Speed dial, you know. The principal called today. Oh, he did. That's weird. No, he calls every day, son. <laughs> or the law called, or whoever and they said somebody at school today, and he would go on to say, did this thing. And then the principal says, and that person's name is Cameron Corbin, your son. And my dad would use the same line. He goes, well, that's, that's not my son. My son would never do something like that. Cameron, when the principal called me, I was very confused because my boy would never do that. So in certain times, that would just wreck me. See, God's given you a message to warn people that there's an enemy approaching. There's an enemy of pornography that has inundated our cell phone technology. Your Netflix account that has no restrictions when your four-year-old is trying to search or your son or daughter is going to jump online to do some homework to study the history. And then somebody's intentionally trying to target Google's SEO word or however that works. Intentionally trying to get a certain site or a certain message or a certain picture to pop up on an innocent search. So we got to sound the alarm and talk and say there is danger there that will destroy the purity and the sanctity of marriage in your life. It'll wreck your life. Yeah, I understand it comes from the earth, but that doesn't mean we just smoke it because it's earthly. You know, there's a message there. There's a message that God's called you to sound the alarm 
and he's gifted you in a way to do it. Some of you, your alarm is loud and obnoxious. And some of you, your alarm is a soft-spoken word and a hug saying, look, I'm going to walk with you through this. But God has positioned you to sound the trumpet that comes from heaven because the trumpet is Jesus Christ. Revelation 1.10, John says, I'm just going to read it. Turn with me to Revelation 1. Revelation 1 verse 9. It says, I, John, both your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and the patience of Jesus Christ was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice as a trumpet. It is the voice of the Lord that is sounding like a trumpet and he's piercing the air. He's piercing the sound barriers. He's piercing. You ever hear people say with the atmosphere in the room, you ever, the vibe, the ambiance, man, it was real stressful, man. I just kind of walked in and, and it just had this real chaotic feel to the place. Had this, had this real sexually perverse, man. It was just like perversion everywhere, man. It was just anger everywhere. There was such racial tension everywhere. It was just in the room. Listen, Jesus says, then I've put you as a watchman on the wall to say that's the enemy attacking. That's the enemy's MO. That's the enemy's. So therefore, he puts you there to clear the air and to set the standard. He's put you in positions as your voice sings or speaks, as your voice recites, as your voice teaches, whenever God's used you to break the sound barrier, everything you do breaks silence. Then God says, use that as a trumpet to sound the alarm and to warn people. Because if you warn them and they don't listen, their blood's on them. But if I've called you and given you a message and a position and a post to man and you did not warn them and they die in their sin, then I will hold you accountable because I positioned you and you did not heed the call. It's not just for preachers. It's not just for Bible believing or, you know, Bible knowledgeable. Listen, God doesn't care how much scripture you know and, and nobody else does either. People just want to know that you're warning them because you love them. Does that make sense? God's called us to a position. And I'm telling you, there's been a shift and God's poured you enough. He's poured out on you enough for you to go and make a difference. Amen? Let's stand and pray. As we do, I want to read one last passage of Scripture out of Numbers, chapter 10. Numbers, chapter 10. And the Lord, verse one, if we could throw it up there. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, make two silver trumpets for yourself. You shall make them of hammered work. You shall use them for calling the assemblies and for directing the movements of the camps. When they blow, both of them, all the assemblies shall gather together before you at the door of the tabernacle of the meeting. But if they blow only one, then the leaders and the heads of the divisions of Israel shall gather to you. When you sound the advance, the camps that lie on the east side shall then begin their journey. When you sound the advance the second time, then the camps lie, that lie on the south side shall begin their journey. 
They shall sound the call for them to begin their journeys. And when the congregation is to be gathered together, look at verse 7. When the congregation, when Whitestone is to be gathered together, you shall blow but not sound the advance. See, there is a sound from heaven that says gather together and hear the word of the Lord. There's a sound from heaven that says, hey, listen, it is time to group together. So that you can get the battle orders, so that you can get your commandments, so, so that you can get your orders, if you will. Verse 8. The sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow the trumpets, and these shall be to you as an ordinance forever throughout your generations. I'm telling you, the trumpet is still blowing today. Verse 9. See, you can't go to war until you first come together. When you go to war in your land against the enemy who oppresses you, then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpets. You will be remembered before the Lord your God and you will be saved from your enemies. When you go into war in your land, when you go to war against the enemy that's in your house, when you go to war that's in against the enemy that's in your marriage or coming against your, your kids or, or just, what about a poverty mindset? What about a, a failure mindset? When you go to war against the enemy in your mind, when you go to war against the enemy of disease in your physical body, when you go to war against the enemy that's in your land, God's given you land and given you territory and you are not to yield it. You're not to back down from it. You are to take dominion and conquer that which God's put you over. You are to win. You are victorious in the Lord. You are not defeated. You are not cast out. You are not rejected and forgotten. You are called and ordained and anointed and appointed to win. Despite yesterday, there is still life after divorce. There is still life after shame. There is still life after defeat. There is still ministry after prison. There is still the call of God on your life, regardless of what yesterday you did or was done to you. When the enemy comes against you in your land, sound the trumpet. In Jewish culture, that, that is a nine short blasts of the trumpet was a call to battle. Three blasts would warn people. Another sound would gather people. And then nine short, I, I think it's called stacchetto blasts. I butchered that word, but it's something really cool. Nine short blasts would say, go and fight. God's called you to fight. Take your territory. Sound the alarm. Warn those who God's put you over. Amen? Amen. Father God, we bless you. Let's just put our hands up and just say, God, I surrender. God, I surrender. Listen, I don't know how you got here today, but you may say, Pastor, I just need to get right with Jesus then would you just out loud, out loud just, just between you and me, we don't all need to hear what you're saying, but just say, Jesus, I give you my life. I give you my sin. I give you my garbage. I give you my past. God, I've been mad at you. God, I walked away from you. I don't, I don't know why, but, but I, God, I was mad at the church. I got mad at my, you know what? Just, God, I give it to you. I surrender. And God, I pray that you would give me the voice to speak. God, I realize that you have given me a position. Every person in this room is a leader. Every person in this room has a position. Some are very visible. Some are very behind the scenes and, and some are all in between. But God has positioned you. So Father God, I, I, I today, just say it with me. I today, I today. want to, want to. speak and warn. And warn. Give, me Give me the ability to do it. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. I'm going to ask, I want to ask um, Russell and other.